what a wonderful, interesting, inspiring story you have. Thanks. Um, so, so I, we're just going to shut up and let you talk. Yeah, tell I can. Tell us about it. <laughs> in a nutshell, yeah, I definitely wasn't born a teenager, but um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I uh, had my son when I was 16, and that kind of put me on a path to um, buckling down and figuring out what I want to do with my life. And so I actually ended up going into healthcare, uh, going to school, getting my bachelor's degree in biology. So I tell everyone my degree is really in biology. So maybe you shouldn't believe anything I tell you about real estate. <laughs> Trust, but verify. Um, and I worked in a hospital in like trauma and critical care as a, a respiratory therapist. So with people on life support, I did that for 13 years. Wow. During that time, I met my now husband, picked up a book about real estate investing called the one minute millionaire and just started reading all these stories about people like buying houses and renting them and other people are paying down their mortgage. And I'm like, this has got to be a lie. There's like, no way this is actually <laughs> happening. Like I would get to keep the equity. Why would they let me do that? And my husband had two small rental properties. So he knew all about it, but I was for graduating from college and work, having a really good job. I was renting a house. I was completely not financially educated at all. So my husband's like, why are you renting a house? Like you make good money. I'm like, what else is there? Like, where should I be living? <laughs> He's like, I didn't even like the concept of buying a house wasn't even something in my world. Um, and he helped me buy my first house, like basically showed me the process like that, you know, you have great credit and you pay your bills and you should buy a house. So I did. And we ended up turning that into a rental. And at the time I was in school for my master's degree to be the CEO of a hospital. And I was like, wow, I can either stay in my master's degree or I can learn more about real estate. So I dropped out of my master's program and my mother almost had a heart attack. That was the, the first heart attack I almost gave her. Um, and I was like, I'm taking a real estate investing class. So I can't afford to put any more money towards a master's degree. And I just started learning about real estate investing more and more. So then when I was working in healthcare, um, I started flipping houses on the side and did that for three years until, you know, healthcare has kind of become more like a business and I lost my passion for it. And it became more painful to go to work than I, than filling me up with joy. So I just, my husband said to me one day, you know, if you put this much effort into real estate as you do working for someone else, mm. you could like really have a great business and run your own business. And when I was 35 for my birthday, I just walked into my boss's office and was like, I'm resigning and I'm hanging up my license and I'm never coming back. So I gave up my license to practice and everything. I was like, I want no safety net at all wow. I don't keep buying houses so we kept flipping and basically like I flipped for those three years knowing I was eventually going to exit but I wanted to buy rentals because I feel like the only way to grow true wealth is to like buy assets or be invested in in those hard assets long term not just the short term flipping that was kind of just capital to pay off debt so um then I could go to a bank and say, hey, I have this rental and I want to do a cash out refinance on it. And they can't say, oh, but you quit your job. Because then I would say, oh, but I've been flipping houses for three years, actually making more than I did at my healthcare job. And I was only flipping three houses a year. It wasn't like I was like had some huge machine and was flipping all these houses. That, and I tell people, you don't have to have like this gigantic machine running. Um, we have that now, but we didn't have that back then. So I retired from healthcare at 35 and um, just kind of chased real estate full time and started buying rentals and raising private money. And in the process of raising private money, a private money lender said to me, I was in a meeting having coffee with him and he's like, what did you do with all your old retirement accounts from healthcare? I'm like, oh, I don't know. They're just like, I don't know. What is, what do people do with them? And he's like, well, do you have like a retirement account? I'm like, oh yeah, I have a Roth IRA. Like I felt so proud. Like I have a Roth and I have retirement accounts at, at the hospital I used to work at. And he's like, you know, what are your fees on those? And uh, how much money are you making? And what are you invested in? I'm like, 
I don't really know. Like I just show up at Morgan Stanley and I give my guy money and I'm like, can you invest this for me? Like that. So I was investing in real estate, but I still wasn't making the connection that I didn't have control over my investment over here. If that makes sense. Yep. Um, so it took a private lender saying to me, like, why don't you have a self-directed IRA? And why are you trusting your money with Morgan Stanley when you're clearly successful at real estate? And that's what you know about. And you can grow it in real estate. And my, the first thing out of my mouth, just like, sometimes I just say whatever comes to my mind. And I was like, is that even legal? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, April, it's perfectly legal. Here's what I can talk to you. So I call that the day I broke up with Morgan Stanley because I went to my Morgan Stanley advisor and was just like, I'm, I'm breaking up with you. Like I'm rolling this money over into self-directed and I became a private lender. And that opened up, we always utilized private funds. So we started in 2004 flipping houses on the side. We've never used our own money to buy houses or rentals, always private funds. Um, so that opened up my mind to like, I never really thought I could be a private lender. I just was like utilizing private lenders, but I didn't make the connection that I could do this. Once I did my first private loan, I was like, are you serious? Why didn't someone tell me about this sooner? <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like there's a scale of like the level of hustle it takes in real estate and like wholesaling and flipping is like so much hustle. It's ridiculous. And then owning rentals and I was self-managing and I had my own tenants and this and that. And then someone's like, you can literally just look at a deal and write a check and still make income. And now I'm at the level where I'm passively investing in syndications and larger projects. And I'm like, and now I'm getting the income plus tax benefits, plus equity on the back end. And I'm not doing anything. <laughs> like I'm reviewing the property and writing the check. I'm like, this is crazy. So when I started becoming a private lender, it just like really made me realize that there's different kind of levels of investing for everybody. So now when I talk to people and they're like, oh, I really want to invest in real estate. I'm like, okay, but how? Like you really have to think about how much time do you have? How much money do you have? Like when you're starting your own business and buying your own rentals and doing your own flips, even if you have property management, you're starting, you're starting a business, you're starting another side business. And a lot of people don't have time for that. They just have money and think that they should own the real estate itself. Mm -hmm. And then when you tell them like, Hey, this is what I'm passively investing in. And I don't like quote unquote own it, but I'm partnered with all these great people and they know everything about the tenants and the asset. It's and I'm just sitting back here watching direct deposits go into my bank account. It's amazing. Freaking amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. We we like to call that controlling the asset without the responsibility of owning the asset. Yes. Absolutely. How nice is that? 